Okay, so we're talking about linear transformations, and this is just a problem from beginning calculus. So you know what a polynomial is, right? I mean, you know, yeah. f of x equals t squared plus 2t minus 7 is a polynomial. And in calculus, you learn how to differentiate it. So the derivative of t squared plus 2t minus 7 is 2t plus 2, and so on for any polynomial. And in calculus, you learn that the derivative of the sum of two functions is the sum of the derivatives. And the derivative of a constant times a function is constant times the derivative. So this is true for all differentiable functions in calculus. And polynomials are certainly differentiable. So the solution to the problem, if you like, is just that this is what we learned in calculus, that the derivative is a linear operator. That's all there is to it. So you just have to say that's a proof? Y yes. That is, this is really just to point out that the operations you learned in calculus, differentiation and integration, are examples of linear transformations. Oh, OK. I see. I see. So nothing more than that. So I'm sorry, Professor. I wasn't here a little earlier. I just had a question. Um, will there be another review before the exam on Wednesday? Um, I hope so. If I have, um, if I can put one together tonight or tomorrow morning, but yes, I plan that there should be a review. Okay. Um, and it's, I haven't it's made it up yet. It's going to cover the lessons from last time till up till now. Everything up to the exam. Okay. Thank you. So, um, so remember, a function from one vector space to another is a linear map or a linear transformation if t of v plus v prime is t of v plus t of v prime for all vectors v and v prime in v and T of a, a constant, the scalar times a vector is CT of V for all vectors V and all scalars that are you know, real or complex numbers, whatever they happen to be. And we're studying linear transformations. And the important theorem about linear transformations, which you have to know, is the following. I always like to draw pictures. Here's V, here's W, and here's this linear function between them. So I have zero, the zero vector in V, and the zero vector in W. And we know that the zero vector always gets sent to the zero vector. Uh, but you can have other things that get sent to the zero vector. And what is called the kernel of the linear operator t is all the vectors in v such that t of v is zero. On the other hand, not every vector over here in w comes from some vector in v. So I have the set which is called, so this, that's the kernel of t. This is going to be the image of T. And the image of T is all vectors in W such that W is T of V for some vector V in V. So let's just take an example. So whenever you have a matrix that, for example, a two by two matrix, A equals A, B, C, D, this induces or defines a function T sub A from R2 to R2, and it's defined as follows, T sub A of a vector X, Y 
is just the matrix times x, y. That's a, b, c, d times x, y. And when you multiply the matrix times the vector, that's a, x plus b, y, c, x plus d, y. And this is always linear. So this is, whenever you have a matrix, it defines a linear transformation. So let's take a um, simple example. Suppose we take A to be the matrix 0, 1, 1, 0. So this is a two by two matrix. This is an M2 of R, two by two matrices. So T sub A of a vector X, Y, 0, 1, 1, 0 applied to x, y. When you multiply the matrix times the vector, you get y, x. So for example, T sub A of the vector 5, 2 is the vector 2, 5. What does this correspond to if you try to draw a picture of this? So So 5, 2, that's this vector, got mapped to this vector. T of, let's say, 3, 0 gets mapped to 0, 3. This transformation interchanges the x and y components. So this is a very nice linear transformation. And we should try and find the kernel in the image. So this is our function, t of x, y equals y, x. What is the kernel? The kernel of t is all x, y, such that t of x, y is 0. So that's all x, y. What is t of x, y? It's y, x. y, x equals 0, 0. That just means x equals 0 and y equals 0. So this is just the 0 vector. So the kernel of t just consists of 0. And what is the image of t? Well, if you take any vector x, y, t of the vector y, x is x, y. So every vector is in the image. So the image of T is all of R2. Sometimes it's interesting to find what are called the fixed points of a function. There are points where T of V equals V, nothing changes. So what are the fixed points of this function? So t of x, y, that's equal to y, x. And when is that equal to x, y? Well, if and only if x equals y. So the set of fixed points of this function is all points x, y, where x equals y, x comma x. What does that look like? I mean, we're talking about functions in the plane. This is just the line y equals x. If you take a point on this line and you interchange the coordinates, it still, it doesn't move. It's still on the line. And in fact, this function t of x, y equals y, x is reflection through the line y equals x. So if you want to draw a picture of what this linear transformation does, if you take any point x, y, you draw the perpendicular to the line, you continue the same distance in the opposite side. This point goes to that point. You're reflecting through this line. So, it's really important to try to develop an understanding of what these things really mean. 
And in the simplest case of functions from R2 to R2, you look for a, a geometrical description of the action of the linear transformation. That's what this is. Okay. Any questions about this? So the big theorem that I proved this morning, and I want to prove it again, is the following. The theorem says that V and W be finite dimensional vector spaces. That means they have bases that have a finite number of elements. Let T from V to W, that function, be a linear transformation. Then the theorem says that the dimension of V is equal to the dimension of the kernel of the function plus the dimension of the image of the function. And the dimension of the kernel has a name. It's called the nullity of t. And the dimension of the image has a name, and it's called the rank of t. So this is the theorem. And the proof goes as follows. Again, here's v, here's w. Sitting in here is the kernel of t. Sitting in here is the image of t. So the kernel of t is a subspace of v, right? Because if two vectors get sent to 0, so does their sum, and so does every scalar multiple. Suppose we let the dimension of the vector space V be equal to N, and the dimension of the kernel be equal to K. So a subspace cannot have a larger dimension than the larger space. So K is between 0 and N. And what we have to prove is that the rank of T, which is the image which is the dimension of the image of T. Is equal to N minus K. So that K plus N minus K adds up to N. And the way we prove that is to start with the kernel of T and let V1 up to V sub K be a basis for the kernel of T. <coughs> to say it's a basis means that every vector in the kernel is a linear combination of these vectors. And we know we can choose n minus k vectors, v sub k plus 1, vk plus 2, up to v sub n, so that if I take these two sets together, v1 up to vk, vk plus 1, up to vn, this is a basis for the vector space v. So I have a basis for the vector space V, the big space, which contains a basis for the kernel of this linear transformation. So let V be any vector in V, and we can write 
V is some linear combination of the vectors in the basis. Right, because every vector in V is a linear combination of basis vectors. So what is T of V? Well, T of V is the function T applied to this linear combination. And because T is linear, this is X1 T of V1 up to XK T of VK, and the next term is XK plus one T of VK plus one up to Xn T of Vn. But these K vectors, V1 up to VK are in the kernel. which means that T of V1, T of V2, T of VK, all of these K vectors is zero. This is all zero. So T of V is really just a linear combination of these N minus K vectors. which says that the set of n minus k vectors, t of vk plus one up to t of v sub n spans the subspace image of t. This says that every vector in the image of T is a linear combination of these n vectors. And I wanna show these form a basis. So must show that these n minus k vectors are linearly independent. So let's do that. Suppose we have scalars xk plus one up to xn such that the zero vector is xk t of v xk plus one t of vk plus one xk plus two, t of vk plus two, all the way up to xn, t of vn. But of course, this is a linear operator. So this is just t applied to the linear combination, xk plus one, vk plus one, xk plus two, vk plus two, up to xn, vn which means this vector is in the kernel because this is a vector in V and T of this vector is zero. So XK plus one, VK plus one up to XN, VN is in the kernel of T. But V1 up to VK is a basis for the kernel of T. So this vector has to be a linear combination of these K vectors. So there exist scalars X1 up to XK such that X1 V1, X2 V2 and so forth up to XK VK 
is equal to xk plus one vk plus one up to xn vn. But v1 up to vn is a basis. So this means if this linear combination equals this linear combination, all of the scalars have to be zero. They're all zero. So when I took this linear combination of T of VK plus one up to T of VN, all these scalars are zero. So the set T of VK plus one up to T of VN is linearly independent. And we know it spans the image. So the dimension of the image of T is N minus K. And we're done because N equals K plus N minus K. This is the dimension of the vector space. This is the dimension of the kernel. This is the dimension of the image. That's what we wanted to prove. So, This is a proof. And this is a proof that you have to learn because I might very well ask you to prove this on the next exam or on the final. It's one of the fundamental results in linear algebra. Okay. Questions about this? This is. I'm getting kind of serious. Now, I want to explain something about how you can actually represent a linear transformation on a vector space once you have a basis. And it basically shows that every linear transformation is a matrix. Um, so, how do we do that? So we have to understand how you use a basis to give coordinates to a vector. So let's do that. So let V be a vector space. Say the dimension of V is equal to N and let script B be a basis for V. This means that every vector has a unique representation. So every vector V in the vector space has a unique representation as a linear combination of V1 up to VK, VN up to VN. So every V you can write as some summation X sub I, V sub I, I goes from one up to N. And what is called The coordinate vector of V with respect to this basis B 
is, I'll write V in square brackets, V. That's this vector, X1, X2 up to Xn in Rn, where these are the coordinates. So associated, once you have a basis associated to every vector in your vector space is a column vector in Rn. So for example, let's take the simplest example. Suppose I take R3 and as my basis, I use the set E1, E2, E3. This is the standard basis where E1 is the vector 1, 0, 0. E2 is the vector 0, 1, 0. And E3 is the vector 0, 0, 1. So if I take a vector V, which is X, Y, Z, how do I write it as a linear combination of these vectors? Well, this is X, 0, 0, plus 0, Y, 0, plus 0, 0, Z. This is X times 1, 0, 0, plus Y times 0, 1, 0, plus Z times 0, 0, 1 which is x e1 plus y e2 plus z e3. So for this vector v, the coordinate vector with respect to the standard basis is exactly the same vector as x, y, z. So that's not too exciting. But the interesting thing is, what is this coordinate vector with respect to a different basis for R3. So we have R3, we have the basis E, which is the standard basis, E1, E2, E3. And let's take another basis with three different vectors, V1, V2, V3, where V1, is the vector 1, 1, 0. V2 is the vector 1, 0, 1. And V3 is the vector 0, 1, 1. <coughs> and suppose I take the vector V equal to 3, 12, 5 in R3. So that's just a vector in three-dimensional space. With respect to the standard basis, E, the coordinate vector is 3, 12, 5. But what is the coordinate vector for the same vector V with respect to this basis B? Well, Let's say it's, I need to write this vector as a linear combination of V1, V2, and V3. So X V1 plus Y V2 plus Z V3. What is that? X times V1 is X X0. Y times V2 is Y0 Y. And Z V3 is 0 Z Z. So when you add this up, you get x plus y, x plus z, y plus z. And we want that to equal the vector 3, 12, 5. Because I want to write the vector 3, 12, 5 as a linear combination of these three vectors. Which means I have to solve the equations x plus y equals 3, x plus z equals 12, and y plus z equals 5. So how do I solve those equations? Well, I can solve it any way I like. For example, I could write the augmented matrix 1, 1, 0, 3, 0, 1, 0, 1, 12. Uh, 
and 0, 1, 1, 5. And I want to put this in reduced row echelon form. I have 1, 1, 0, 3, 0, 1, 1, 5. If I take the second row minus the first row, I get 0, minus 1, 1, minus 9. So that's 1, 1, 0, 3. Multiply this by 1, by minus 1. I get 0, 1, minus 1, 9, 0, 1, 1, 5. Let me take, so here's my middle row, 0, 1, minus 1, 9. If I take the first row minus the second, I get 1, 0, 1, minus 6. If I take the third row minus the second, I get 0, 0, 2, minus 4. So this is 1, 0, 1, minus 6, 0, 1, minus 1, 9, 0, 0, divided by 2, 1, minus 2. So I have 0, 0, 0, 1, minus 2. If I add the third row to the second, I get 0, 1, 0, 7. And if I take the first row minus the third row, I get 1, 0, 0, minus 4. Let me just double check this because I'm not 100% convinced this is right. So I start with the vector 3, 12, 5. And I want to write it as a linear combination of v1, v2, and v3. So that gives me the equations x plus y equals 3, x plus z equals 12, y plus z equals 5. So this is the augmented matrix for that system of linear equations. It's an inhomogeneous system of three equations and three variables. 1, 1, 0, 3, 0, 1, 1, 5. Second minus the first gives me 0, minus 1, 1. Ah, this is a plus 9. 1 minus 1, 0, and 12 minus 3 is plus 9. All right, good. Multiply this by minus 1. Now this becomes a minus 9. Take, so this is 0, 1, minus 1, minus 9. And if I take the third row minus the second, I get... 0, 0, 2, 14. And if I divide the second, oh, and if I take the first row minus the third, I get 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2. And then I divide this second row by Two, so it becomes zero zero one seven. This was zero one one minus nine, and this was one zero minus one minus two. So here's my third row zero zero one seven. I add the third row to the second, I get zero one zero minus two. And I add the third row to the first, and I get 1, 0, 0, 5. Good. Which means if I take my vector v and I write it with respect to the basis v, the coordinate vector is 5 minus 2, 7. And let's check that this is correct. What this means is that 5v1 minus 2v2 plus 7v3 should be equal to 3125. So this is 5. v1 is 110 minus 2 times v2, 101, plus 7v3, which is 011. So this is 5 minus 2 is 3. 5 plus 7 is 12. 
minus two plus 12 is five. And lo and behold, everything works out properly. So this is exactly what it's supposed to be. So here we have this idea of representing a vector by coordinates once you choose a basis. Of course, if you have two different bases, you have two different coordinate vectors. And there should be a way to move from one to the other. And of course there is. Um, but maybe it's more interesting before I do that to explain how once you pick bases for your vector spaces, you can represent a linear transformation by a matrix. So let's see where that is. So suppose so this is on the this is this on the matrix representation of a linear transformation. So we have vector spaces V and W and the linear transformation from V to W. And these are finite dimensional. The dimension of V is N. The dimension of W is M. They don't have to have the same dimensions. And suppose we have two bases for these vector spaces. So not the standard bases, but just some bases. So let's say that E1 up to EN is a basis for V and the script F consists of M vectors F1 up to Fm. This is a basis for W. So let's take a vector v in the vector space v and the coordinate basis for v with respect to the basis e is some x1 up to xn in rn what this means is that v is summation xi ei i goes from one up to n v is this linear combination of the basis vectors now, for each j from 1 up to n, if I take the vector ej, the basis vector, t of ej is some vector in w. So t of ej is some linear combination of the m vectors f sub i in the basis for w. And let me say that Aij is this scalar. So this is T of Ej written as a linear combination of the basis vectors in Fi. So if V in the vector space capital V has this coordinate vector, that means V is summation Xi, sorry, summation um, xj ej j goes from one up to uh, n we have the following very important calculation so let me just write down we have first t of ej is summation i goes from one up to m 
AIJ FI. And V is some summation XJ EJ. J goes from one up to N. This is a vector in V. So T of V is T of this summation J goes from one up to N. XJ EJ. Because T is a linear transformation, this is summation J goes from one up to N xj t of ej but t of ej can be represented like that this is summation j goes from one up to n x of j summation i goes from one up to m aij f sub i i can interchange finite summations this is summation i goes from one up to m, summation j goes from one up to n, aij xj fi. So this is a linear combination of the fi's and this is the coefficient. So if I take t of v, what is the coordinate vector for this with respect to the basis b? It's these numbers. Summation A1J XJ down to summation AMJ XJ. And if you remember, well, there's no reason to, but you have to. Um, this is exactly the result if you take the matrix A11, A12 up to A1N, A21, A22 up to A2N down to AM1, AM2, AMN. If you take this matrix times X1, X2, down to X sub N, this is exactly what you get. And what is this? So let's call this matrix A. And this is the coordinate vector for V with respect to the basis E, I use the letter F here, that's right. Aha, uh -huh. so we have observed the following miracle, which is that given a linear transformation T, we construct a matrix, an M by N matrix A, so that you can describe the operation of the linear transformation by a matrix. It's given by this formula. If you take a vector V and you write it, this coordinate vector with respect to the basis E, multiply the by the matrix A, you end up with T of V, the coordinate vector for T of V, with respect to the matrix. Yeah. yeah. So this is always important. Okay, I think I'm going to stop right here because um, there's a lot to digest and um, it's discussed in the notes. So that I think is where I'm going to stop for today right now. Um, any questions before I go? Um, yes, I just want you to go over the one you did earlier, the the first proof you did earlier today. I mean, not earlier this this uh, video. So, let's see where I 
this? You mean the proof of this theorem that for yes. any linear transformation, the dimension of the kernel plus the dimension of the image is the dimension of V. That's the one you mean? Yes, that one. Okay, so, all right. So let me do it again. It's really the third time because I did it this morning and, I'll, and I just did it and, but it's very basic. So you have a finite dimensional vector space V in a linear transformation. So every linear transformation has a kernel. So you take a basis for the kernel. The kernel is a subspace of V. So sitting inside V, you have the kernel. You take a basis for the kernel, and whenever you have a linearly independent set of vectors in a vector space, you can always add vectors to have a basis for the whole vector space. So that's what you do. You choose any way you like, n minus k more vectors so that v1 up to vn is a basis for all of v. And if you take any vector in v, it is a linear combination of the basis vectors v1 to vn. But when you apply t to this, v1 up to vk are in the kernel. So t of v1 up to vk are zero. So t of any vector v is really just T of this, which is a linear combination of T of VK plus one up to T of VN. So what this says is that every vector in the image of T is a linear combination of these N minus K vectors. All right, here they are. And what we wanna show is that these N minus K vectors are linearly independent, so they form a basis. And the way we do that is say, okay, take a linear combination of these n minus k vectors, which equals zero. Of course, since t is linear, that means t of this vector is zero. But then by definition of the kernel, this vector is in the kernel. So this vector is a linear combination of the basis vectors for the kernel, v1 up to vk. So we get an equation like this. <clears throat> This linear combination of V1 to VK equals this linear combination of VK plus one up to VN, but V1 up to VN are linearly independent. So vectors have unique linear combinations of them. So the only way this can equal this is if all the coefficients are zero. So in particular, XK plus one up to XN are zero. That means these N minus K vectors are linearly independent. So that means that these n minus k vectors generate or span the image and they're linearly independent, so they're a basis. So that means that the image of the linear transformation has dimension n minus k. I mean, you know, the kernel has dimension k and k plus n minus k is n. In other words, the dimension of the vector space equals the dimension of the kernel plus the dimension of the image. I mean. That's the proof. And it's uh, somewhat compact, but it uses a lot of ideas from linear algebra. So it's important to understand it. Okay, thank you, Professor. Okay. All right. Um, that's it for today. And I will be back. Um,